Welcome back to Watson's World. I'm Kevin Watson and today we embark on a journey into a story that's as mystifying as it is heartbreaking. In the heart of Jamaica, where the sun kisses the ocean and the nights are filled with reggae beats, a mystery unfolds. A Jamaican woman with dreams bigger than the horizon vanishes leaving behind a trail of questions. This is the story of Desri Gibbon. So whether you are a seasoned true crime aficionado or a newcomer to the genre, buckle up. This is a tale you won't soon forget. But you have to say for yourself. What's for dinner? What's going on here? What's that stink? What's this for? What time is it? What's that? Elementary, my dear Watson. Desiree Gibbons, a radiant 26-year-old from the bustling streets of Queens, New York, was the embodiment of joy. Those who knew her would often say her laughter was infectious, her spirit unbreakable. Born to Andrea Kali Gibbon, a gentle German woman, and Gary Gibbon, a proud Jamaican man. Desri was a blend of cultures, a testament to unity and love. Angelina, Desri's closest confidant, recalls nights spent under the city lights, dancing and laughing without a care in the world. Desri wasn't just a friend, she was family, Angelina's voice quivers. She had this aura this light that just drew you in. From a tender age, Desri was a vision of beauty. Gracing stages at pageants, her confidence shining as brightly as her tiara. But beneath the glitz and glamour lay a passionate filmmaker with a degree in broadcast journalism in her arsenal. Europe's renowned film schools beckoned to fund her dreams Desri found herself in Jamaica in October 2017. The island wasn't unfamiliar. It was a place of childhood memories, of grandparents who ran a quaint bed and breakfast in Montego Bay. Here, Desri's magnetic personality drew in a circle of elite friends, influential figures who were charmed by her genuine warmth. Now, Desri Gibbon, a young woman who embraced the digital age, sharing snippets of her life with friends, family, and followers. Her Instagram was a canvas of memories, each post a brushstroke painting a vivid picture of her adventures. But as the days in Jamaica went by, a puzzling event occurred. Desri, who once enthusiastically shared every sun-soaked moment of her Jamaican journey, made a sudden and unexpected move. She deleted her Instagram account. Now, this raises several pressing questions. Why would Desri, in the midst of her trip, decide to erase her digital footprint? Was it a spontaneous decision or something premeditated? Did something or someone in Jamaica from this drastic action. Perhaps an encounter or a message that alarmed her. Was Desiree trying to distance herself from someone or something? It's not uncommon for individuals to remove themselves from social media to avoid unwanted attention or to break free from certain connections. And as we speculate on these questions, a few theories come to mind. Privacy concerns. Maybe Desri met someone who cautioned her about sharing too much online, especially in a foreign country. It could have been influenced by a new acquaintance. Could she have befriended someone who preferred to stay off the grid, prompting her to respect their privacy? Or could it have been a personal revelation? Sometimes a trip can lend to introspection. Perhaps Desri wanted a break from the digital world to immerse herself fully into her surroundings. 
Now, whatever the reason, this sudden digital disappearance adds another layer of mystery to Desri's story, a layer we are determined to unravel. Now, the date is November 23rd, 2017, Thanksgiving Day. I imagine the Gibbons household was filled with the aroma of roasted turkey and pumpkin pie. The phone rang and Desri's voice echoed. Mom, I'm so happy. I'm in the right place at the right time. Little did Andrea know it would be the last time she would hear her daughter's voice. Two days later, a chilling discovery. A gardener, on his routine walk, stumbled upon a sight that would haunt him forever. Desri's lifeless body, with her throat slashed and showing signs of having been badly beaten, was discarded in the bushes off the Long Hill Main Road in St. James on November 25, 2017, miles away from her residence. The brutal nature of her injuries raises haunting questions. Was this a crime of passion? Did Desri know her attacker? Or was she simply in the wrong place at the wrong time? The severity of the beating suggests intense anger or hatred, possibly pointing to someone she might have known or someone who had a strong motive. The Montego Bay police, believing her to be a tourist, began their investigation back in the US. A family's worst nightmare was unfolding. Days turned into agonizing nights. Desri's silence was deafening. The phone rang, its shrill tone piercing the silence of the Gibbons household. Gary, Desri's father, answered only to be met with the heart-wrenching sobs of his mother. The words that followed would shatter their world. Desri was no more. The pain was unbearable. Andrea and Gary, once pillars of strength, were now consumed by grief and disbelief. Who could have bear such malice towards their beloved Desri? As the news of Desri's tragic end, reached to the shores of New York, a media storm ensued. Reporters flocked to the Gibbons residence, their cameras capturing the raw anguish of a family torn apart. The story of the American beauty, whose life was cruelly snuffed out in Jamaica, resonated with many demanding justice. But in Montego Bay, the investigation seemed to be at a standstill. The gruesome details of Desri's demise, her throat slashed, painted a chilling picture. Yet the local authorities appeared to be dragging their feet, leaving more questions than answers. Determined to seek the truth, Andrea and Gary boarded a flight to Jamaica on December 7th, 2017. Their arrival at the Montego Bay Police Department was met with an unsettling coldness, the lack of transparency and reluctance to share crucial information raised eyebrows. Desri's uncle, the caretaker of the family's bed and breakfast, provided a glimmer of hope. Surveillance footage revealed Desri's final moments at the hotel. The clock read, 11.27 p.m. As Desri, engrossed in her iPhone, informed the security guard of her brief departure, those fleeting moments on camera were the last traces of Desri alive. Andrea's maternal instincts kicked in as she scoured Desri's room. A discovery, Desri's secondary cell phone, meant for Jamaican calls. But where was her primary phone, the one she was seen with in the surveillance footage? Its absence was a puzzling piece that didn't fit. The presence of the secondary phone in her room could suggest that Desri intentionally left it behind, perhaps feeling it wasn't necessary for her outing. This raises questions about the nature of her departure. Was she expecting to be out for a short duration? 
or did she feel safer using her primary phone? The fact that the primary phone is missing while the secondary one was left behind might indicate that the events leading to her tragic end were unexpected. It also raises questions about the police's approach. Why was this secondary phone in Desri's room? Didn't the police search her room? In my experience as an investigator, Desri's room would be a part of the crime scene. Which means that if thorough investigations were being carried out, that secondary phone would have been in the possession of the police. In so doing, the police could have carried out a thorough examination of the secondary phone for potential leads, messages, or recent calls that might provide insights into Desri's state of mind or her plans for that fateful evening. Local Jamaican reporters, sensing the family's desperation, stepped in. They revealed the grim location where Desri's life was brutally cut down. The revelation was a double-edged sword, bringing both clarity and pain. Why were the police withholding such vital information? The quest for justice is far from over. With a missing phone, elusive surveillance footage, and a police department shrouded in mystery, Desri's story is a labyrinth waiting to be unraveled. The picturesque beauty of Jamaica stands in stark contrast to the dark cloud that now hangs over the Gibbons family. Andrea and Gary, once hopeful for answers, find themselves navigating a maze of inconsistencies and evasions. The crime scene, eerily pristine, raised Gary's suspicions. The absence of blood, despite the brutal nature of Desri's injuries, was a glaring anomaly. This isn't where it happened, he whispered, a chilling realization dawning upon him. Determined to bring their daughter home and uncover the truth, Andrea and Gary's resilience put the Montego Bay Police Department on edge. The potential fallout of an American tourist murder on Jamaican soil was a ticking time bomb, and the authorities seemed all too eager to defuse it hastily. The journey of identifying Desri's body was a horrifying one. Hours of driving through Jamaica's winding roads led them to a remote morgue. The sight that awaited them was heart-wrenching. Andrea's anguished cries echoed through the sterile halls. That's not my baby. The once vibrant Desri was now unrecognizable. A testament to the brutality she endured. The autopsy revealed a tale of courage and resistance. Desiree's hands bore the marks of a fierce struggle, evidence of her desperate attempts to fend off her attacker. The bruises on her knees painted a grim picture, suggesting an execution-style killing. The why of it all remained a riddle. Desiree's funeral in December 2017 was a somber affair. Loved ones from across the globe converged to bid farewell, their grief evident. The decision for a close casket was a silent acknowledgement of the horrors she had faced. As the days turned into months, the quest for justice seemed to hit a wall. Andrea's pleas for answers were met with empty reassurances and abrupt hang-ups. The Montego Bay Police Department's lack of urgency was maddening. The passage of time did little to ease the Gibbons family's pain. But two months after Desiree's tragic end, an unexpected twist emerged. Miss Peggy, Desiree's aunt, received a call that would send shivers down her spine. The familiar ringtone of Desiree's primary cell phone echoed in the room. Peggy, her heart racing, answered, hoping against hope. But the voice she yearned to hear was replaced by an eerie silence. 
punctuated only by the sound of someone breathing on the other end. Was this a cruel prank? A guilty conscience? Or a desperate cry for help? The family relayed this chilling encounter to the Jamaican police, but their pleas seemed to fall on deaf ears. Enter T.J. Ward, a seasoned private investigator with a reputation for cracking the toughest cases. Hired by the Gibbons family, he embarked on a quest to uncover the truth, but the path was fraught with obstacles. U.S. law enforcement, bound by jurisdictional constraints, could offer little assistance. The discovery of foreign DNA on Desri's body is a significant lead, pointing to the involvement of at least two individuals in this heinous crime. With such tangible evidence, one would expect a swift and thorough investigation. Yet, the apparent reluctance of the Montego Bay police to act on these leads is deeply concerning. In an era where DNA technology has advanced significantly and has been instrumental in solving cold cases worldwide, one only hope that the Jamaican authorities have meticulously stored this crucial evidence. Should the perpetrators resurface in the future or get involved in another crime, this DNA could be the key to finally bring them to justice and providing some semblance of closure for Desiree's grieving family. Years passed, but Desiree's memory remained undimmed. In a heartfelt plea, Andrea penned an open letter to the Prime Minister of Jamaica seeking answers and justice for her beloved daughter. Desiree's vibrant dreams, her aspirations of filmmaking, and her zestful life stood in stark contrast to the tragedy that befell her. Theories abounded, from jealous lovers to sinister plots, but concrete evidence remained elusive. As 2023 dawned, Desri's family continued their relentless pursuit of the truth. Andrea's daily letters and calls echoed with a mother's undying hope. The quest for justice is far from over, and the mystery of Desri Gibbon remains unsolved. Before we conclude, fellow investigators and listeners, let's take a moment to construct a speculative profile of the individual or individuals who might be involved in the tragic demise of Desiree Gibbon. Now, this profile is being constructed based on the details provided. Actual investigative results may vary. Profiling can offer potential leads and insights but it's essential to approach with caution and corroborate with tangible evidence. Now, let us look at Desiree's digital footprint. Desiree's abrupt decision to delete her Instagram account coupled with her active online presence necessitates a deeper probe into her digital interactions. Desiree's interactions, whether with locals or fellow foreigners, could be pivotal. These digital traces might hint at potential suspects or underlying motives. A thorough examination of her final post, messages, or digital engagements could shed light on any planned rendezvous or subtle indications of unease. A detailed look in Desiree's financial activities during her Jamaican stay might be revealing. Uncharacteristic withdrawals or purchases could suggest external pressure or premeditated actions. Investigating her personal and professional life and any ensuing conflicts within that realm, whether with her friends or in her professional life, could be crucial. Now, being an American in Jamaica, Desiree might have been particularly noticeable. Grasping the local viewpoint towards foreigners, especially Americans, might offer insight into potential motives. Considering the timing of Desri's last known appearance, an exploration of the local nightlife she might have been a part of is warranted. Insights from staff or regular patrons could be invaluable. 
I also believe that an independent reassessment of the crime scene might uncover previously missed evidence or offer a renewed interpretation of Desri's final moments. I believe the detected foreign DNA necessitates a meticulous forensic study, matching this with both local and global databases could identify the culprits. The enigmatic call from Desri's primary phone hints at an individual, possibly the perpetrator, wrestling with remorse. Such an individual might be on the verge of an inadvertent confession. This should have been pursued by the police. The bold act of using Desri's phone suggests a propensity for risk, hinting that the offender might have prior criminal engagements or is prone to adrenaline-driven activities. Now, guys, my recommendation would be that the police need to collaborate with specialists in digital forensics to extract and scrutinize data from Desri's devices and online profiles. Investigators need to engage with local community figureheads to motivate those um, with information to step forward, like the MPs, the councillors within these divisions. Now, I'm sure many of my true crime aficionados will have more recommendations, right? You have heard this case and I'm sure you're asking yourself many questions. Now, guys, finally, what I want to put out there is that if anyone has information that could help us bring the perpetrators to justice, please email me at thenoblecop at gmail.com. Your assistance could be the key to unlocking this mystery. And remember, every piece of information, no matter how small, can be a beacon of hope. Together with persistence and unity, we can shine a light on the truth and ensure that justice prevails. Join me, Kevin Watson, as we continue to seek answers in this haunting tale, only on Watson's World. Guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, walk good, Yaman. Yeah,